chapitre 6. <laughs> Chapter 6 of Romans. Let's go. So, what do we do then? Do we persist in sin so that God's kindness and grace will increase? What a terrible thought. <laughs> we have died to sin once and for all. As a dead man passes away from this life, so how could we live under sin's rule a moment longer? Or have you forgotten that all of us who were immersed into union with Jesus, the Anointed One, were immersed into union with His death? Sharing in His death by our baptism means that we were co-buried and entombed with Him, so that when the Father's glory raised Christ from the dead, we were also raised with Him. We have been co-resurrected with Him so that we could be empowered to express an entirely new life. For if we are permanently grafted into Him to experience a death like His, then we are permanently grafted into Him to experience a resurrection like His and the new life that it imparts. Could it be any clearer? That our former identity is now and forever deprived of its power. For we were co-crucified with him to dismantle the stronghold of sin within us. So that we would not continue to live one moment longer submitted to sin's power. Obviously, a dead person is incapable of sinning. And if we were incapable of sinning, and if we were co-crucified with the Anointed One, we know that we will also share in the fullness of His life. And we know that since the Anointed One has been raised from the dead to die no more, His resurrection life has vanquished death and its power over Him is finished. For by His sacrifice, he died to sin's power once and for all, but now he lives continuously for the Father's pleasure. So let it be the same way with you. Since you are now joined with him, you must continually view yourselves as dead and unresponsive to sin's appeal while living daily for God's pleasure in union with Jesus, the Anointed One. Sin is a dethroned monarch. So you must no longer give it an opportunity to rule over your life, controlling how you live and compelling you to obey its desires and cravings. So then, refuse to answer its call to surrender your body as a tool for wickedness. Instead, passionately answer God's call to keep yielding your body to Him as one who has now experienced resurrection life. You live now for His pleasure, ready to be used for His noble purposes. Remember this, sin will not conquer you, for God already has. You are not governed by law, but governed by the reign of the grace of God. What are we to do then? Should we sin to our heart's content since there's no law to condemn us anymore? What a terrible thought! Don't you realize that grace frees you to choose your own master? But choose carefully, for you surrender yourself to become a servant, bound to the one you choose to, to obey. If you choose to love sin, it will become your master, and it will own you and reward you with death. But if you choose to love and obey God, he will lead you into perfect righteousness. And God is pleased with you. For in the past, you were servants of sin, but now your obedience is heart deep and your life is being molded by truth through the teaching you are devoted to. And now you celebrate your freedom from your former master, sin. You've left its bondage and now... God's perfect righteousness holds power over you as his loving servants. I've, re I've used familiar terms of a servant and a master to compensate for your weakness to understand. 
For just as you surrendered your bodies and souls to impurity and lawlessness, which only brought you more lawlessness into your lives, so now surrender yourselves as servants of righteousness, which brings you deeper into true holiness. For when you were bound as servants to sin, you lived your lives free from any obligation to righteousness. So tell me, what benefit ensued from doing these things that you're now ashamed of? It left you with nothing but a legacy of shame and death. But now, as God's loving servants, you live in joyous freedom from the power of sin. So consider the benefits you now enjoy. <laughs> you are brought deeper into the experience of true holiness that ends with eternal life. For sin's meager wages is death. But God's lavish gift is life eternal, found in your union with our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. 